Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the best features that Microsoft is planning to ship on Windows 11 version 22H2. Although we're months away from the feature release, Microsoft is nearly done adding features and improvements for Windows 11 version 22H2. Also, since the company is already making available previews on the beta channel of the Windows 10 program, we have a pretty good idea of what is to come in the next update. Okay, for version 22H2, don't expect big changes. Of course, there are some new features, but mostly it's going to be improvements for the 16 features. And you will find that many features that were previously removed now are coming back. Also, Microsoft is working on updating many parts of the desktop interface to make the experience a little more consistent, but it still needs a lot of work. So here is the best features to expect with the release of Windows 11 version 22H2. On Windows 11 version 22H2, Microsoft plans to update the start menu with folders and the ability to change layouts for the recommended section. In this new version, you will be able to drag and drop an app on top of another app to create a folder. And this will allow you to better organize your apps. When you open the folder, you can even rename it to anything you want and you can keep adding more apps as needed. The folder also supports the context menu and you can also remove the apps. And when you removed all of them, the folder will be deleted. As part of the recommended section, which is this one right here at the bottom of the pin section on the start menu, you will now be able to customize the number of items that appear in this section. You can actually disable the feature, which is something that users really want. But now on the start settings, you can choose from three different options. You can show more pins and this will lower the amount of items that you see in the recommended section. You can use the default setting, which, which enables the uh, default layout or you can choose more recommendations to show even more recommendations at the bottom and show less pins at the top. Windows 11 is also bringing some highly requested improvements to the taskbar. Perhaps the most significant one is the ability to drag and drop a file to an app on the taskbar to open the file with that particular application. Also, it is now possible to drag and drop apps from the start menu to the taskbar to pin them. However, the option is only available through the all apps list. Furthermore, the taskbar will now show the time and date information across all the monitors on a multi-monitor setup like it was possible in previous versions. Version 22H2 introduces a new taskbar design for tablets that will automatically transition from tablet mode when disconnecting or folding back the keyboard on a compatible device. This feature won't be available on laptops or desktops. The new taskbar offers two modes, including collapse, which is this one right here, and expanded, which is this one right here. The collapse hides all the icons except those essential ones from the system tray, giving you more space and preventing you from accidentally invoking the taskbar while holding the tablet. The expanded mode shows all the icons just like the regular taskbar, but you will notice that the icons are a little bigger and the actual UI is a little higher, which makes it easier to allow you to interact with it using touch. Another best feature on Windows 11 version 22H2 is a new way to snap windows into snap layouts. You can try it by dragging a window to the top of the screen where you will see now that as we approach to the edge, it will reveal a new snap layouts menu and dropping a window into one of the layouts. It allows us to continue snapping windows more easily on Windows 11 on the desktop. As part of the uh, desktop experience, Windows 11 now makes it easier to snap windows by introducing Microsoft Edge tabs as options to snap using the Snap Assist feature. So now when you try to snap 
Windows and you have multiple tabs open on Microsoft Edge, you will see them as suggestions on Snap Assist. As we can see right here, I have three tabs open and I can choose any of them to snap it side by side with another application. Another subtle but interesting change in this update, it's now that when you hover over an app that belongs to a snap, you will now see that the snap group now includes a desktop wallpaper that makes it easier to differentiate the group from normal windows. This will not only appear on the taskbar previews, but also when using the alt tab shortcut, as you can see right here, and when opening task view, as you can see right here. On Windows 11 version 22H2, File Explorer, it's not expected to get tabs at least in this release, but it will introduce some interesting new features and tweaks. For example, starting with its new version, File Explorer will now show previews for items in folders, as you can see it right here. Let me just switch to a larger preview, so you can see now that folders show a preview of the content inside of that particular location. Since the legacy context menu won't go away anytime soon, Microsoft is adding a new shortcut, which is Shift right click and that will open the legacy context menu faster. In the past you needed to right click the folder and then go to show more options or after you open the context menu you will need to use the shift F10 to access the legacy context menu. You will also notice that the items on the legacy context menu now includes more padding and the selection color uses a light or dark color depending on the system color mode using on Windows 11. In addition, File Explorer also comes with a new OneDrive integration and that means that now when you open the OneDrive folder on File Explorer you will notice a menu on the top right corner and that will show you that the files are actually syncing to the cloud and you can also see the storage usage. Clicking the settings button will open the OneDrive settings client and of course you get an option to subscribe to get more storage or open OneDrive online. Another best feature that you're going to find on Windows 11 version 22H2, it's a new feature called Windows Spotlight and that's available through the background settings. And the feature changes the desktop background automatically every day with different pictures around the world. The feature is similar to Spotlight for the lock screen and you can enable it from this page. And if you're showing the desktop icons, you also find this learn, this learn about this picture option. And when you right click it, you can switch to another picture. You can like it to get more pictures that look similar to the one you have in the background. And you can click the thumbs down to try to teach the system not to get similar pictures. Microsoft is bringing back the ability to switch default web browsers quickly. Once you upgrade to this version, you will find a new set default button that will automatically configure Chrome, Firefox, or any other browser as the default for the system. Although this feature is not entirely new to Windows 11 version 22H2 because it was available in the past, when Windows 11 was released, Microsoft removed this option and it made it more difficult for users to switch default browsers. And now that feature is coming back. So if you want to use a different browser other than Microsoft Edge, you can install the browser that you like and then go to the default apps settings, open the app and click the set default button. And that, as you can see, will make it the default for the system. However, the button is not gonna make it the default for everything. Things like PDF, SVG and other formats will still open on Microsoft Edge. You can still click that option and select the default browser that you want to use with that particular image, file, or protocol. Up until now, you had to use Control Panel to remove updates. However, starting with Windows 11 
version 22H2, the settings app gets a new page to uninstall cumulative and feature updates from the settings app from the modern interface. Since control panel will no longer include the programs and features page, using the settings app will be the only way to remove updates using a graphical interface moving forward. So here, the interface is going to list only the updates that you can uninstall. If one update is causing problems, you can click the uninstall button and that will remove it from the device. Another best addition to Windows 11 version 22H2 is the new redesigned task manager, which has been overhauled with a new design treatment that matches the design style available on Windows 10 with rounded corners, Mika material that shines the desktop background through the app's frame and new iconography. However, as you can see, the app retains the familiar experience as a legacy version, but with modern improvements. For example, the new task manager includes a navigation pane on the left that lets you move between the different pages of the application and everything looks the same for how you use the app. One thing that you will see different is that at the top of the app, you will see different actions that you can use depending on the page that you're on. The app also includes a settings page that allows you to set the default page when you start the app. You can set the real-time update speed and you can also change other behaviors of the application. Of course, the app also responds to the system color. So if you switch to the dark theme, the application also is going to switch to the dark mode as well. As part of the biggest improvements on version 22H2, you will also notice that the system includes many updates to bring the legacy visual elements to the new design language. For example, in this new version, Windows 11 finally brings an updated flyout for the system hardware indicators, including for, including for volume, brightness, camera, and airplane mode to align with the new design language throughout Windows 11. Furthermore, these new elements also support the light and dark mode colors. For elements, that are still on the legacy design style, for example, run command and many others. You will also notice now that the title bars uses the Mika semi-transparent material that adds some sort of a consistency between the modern and legacy elements. You can see pretty well the transparency, but let me just switch to a different wallpaper. And as you can see that the title bar adjusts to the colors of the desktop background. Also, Windows 11 even comes with a redesigned version of the Print Q app that matches the design language with rounded corners, Mika material, and more. The application also makes it easy to identify the desired print job. As you can see right here, we can see the thumbnail, the printer that is trying to print to, the current status, and you also get different options and you can even choose the different printers if you have more printers on connected to your computer. In addition, this new version of Windows 11 also includes a redesigned version of the print dialog interface. This is the same as the one you used to see in other versions of Windows, but it's been updated to include the design language that we're seeing throughout Windows 11. One interesting thing about this the application is that it now it can discover printers in the network automatically. So if you find a printer that never has been connected to Windows, you can select it and the system will install it automatically without even having to open the settings app. Another brand new feature on Windows 11 version 22H2 is Live Captions, which allows anyone to better understand the audio by viewing captions of the spoken content. You can enable the feature by using the, you can enable the feature by using the Windows Control L keyboard shortcut. And if this is the first time using the feature, you will get this prompt to download the package to set up the feature. Okay, I'm not sure what exactly happened, but I just restarted the feature and now it seems that it's working. So once the package has been downloaded and installed on the computer, you can open the feature once again using the Windows Control L keyboard shortcut. And then you can just play anything in the computer and that should start 
auto generating the captions as you can see right here at the top you can click the settings menu and you can change positions and you can even use the floating position so you can place it anywhere on the screen also as part of the settings for captions you can use filters and you can also include the microphone audio and clicking the caption style will open the accessibility captions page where you can change the settings for the caption style and that was a closer look at the live captions on windows 11. one of the best features on windows 11 version 22h2 is voice access the feature enables anyone to control their laptop or desktop computer using only their voice to set it up you want to go to the settings tab to the accessibility section and then go to the speech page and at the top you will find voice access where you can turn it on to enable it and if this is the first time enabling the uh, feature you will need to agree to the terms and here's the setup process and here's a quick guide that allows you to learn more about how to use the feature and at the end of the guide you can view all the commands that you can use with voice access when using voice access, you can use your voice to open and switch apps, browse the web, and dictate emails, and more. According to the company, the feature leverages modern on-device speech recognition to recognize the speech accurately, and it is supported without an internet connection. The feature only supports the English US language, which means that the Windows display language should be English USA. Otherwise, voice access might not work as expected. So as you can see, the system is denying the access to the microphone and if you see that you will need to actually go to privacy and security and then on microphone we want to allow access and as you can see now the feature it's working we also have a settings menu that allows you to select the microphone add a new microphone and manage the microphone settings also there is a manage options sub menu that allows you to turn on automatic punctuation use filtering and configure the app to automatically start the settings and here's an option to turn off voice access once the feature has been configured you can click the microphone button and then the computer will start listening for example what can i say and that will launch the voice access guide another command that we can use open start or we can use the command open microsoft edge focus isn't new it was previously available at focus assist but with a new name microsoft introducing new changes as part of these changes the feature will now help you to stay on track with a new integration with the clock app to use the focus tools such as focus timer and calming music so when you open the settings for the feature you will now see that you can start a focus session right here and you have different options that you can configure you can set the duration for the session and then clicking the start focus session will open the clock app into the focus session settings and as you can see now the session has started and you can add your to-do list and add your spotify playlist to play music during the session also when opening notification center you can start a focus session right from the flyout and as you can see we have a new icon for the feature and there is a new don't disturb option which makes it easy to silence all the notification banners actually the option to enable or disable do not disturb it's right here at the top right and if you want you can click the notification settings where you can set up rules to automatically turn on do not disturb from the settings app windows 11 version 22h2 also includes new touch gestures to make it easier and quicker to navigate the desktop and apps using touch For example, you can now swipe your finger from the middle of the taskbar to invoke the start menu and swipe back down to dismiss it. You can swipe right 
to left from the pin to get to the all apps section and left to right to get back to the pin section. And you can swipe your fingers from the bottom right corner of the taskbar to invoke the quick settings and you can swipe back down to dismiss it. Also, Microsoft has updated the animation when swiping to invoke and dismiss the notification center from the right edge of the screen to be more responsive and follow your fingers. Finally, if in full screen, a touch oriented app or a game, you will notice a gripper that appears if you swipe from the left edge of the screen, as you can see right here. And that's it. These were some of the best features and improvements that we can expect to see when Windows 11 version 22 H2 releases. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.